Hello and welcome to 150 Days of Psalms. My name is Derek Copen and I'm the pastor at Salem Lutheran Church in Orlando, Florida, where each day I wrestle with uh, one of the psalms and a bit of reflection uh, for 150 days, uh, one by one. Uh, most of these reflections come from my own experiences and uh, my hope is that you will find your experiences in these ancient poems as well. Today is day 83 and we read Psalm 83. O God, do not be silent. Do not keep still, nor hold your peace, O God. For your enemies are in tumult, and those who hate you have lifted up their heads. They take secret counsel against your people and plot against those whom you protect. They have said, Come, let us wipe them out as a people. Let the name of Israel be remembered no more. With one mind they have conspired together. They have made an alliance against you. The tents of Edom and the Ishmaelites and the Moabites and the Hagarines, Gabal and Ammon and Amalek, the Philistines and those who dwell in Tyre, the Assyrians also have joined them, empowering the descendants of Lot. Do to them as you did to Midian, to Sisera and to Jabin at the river of Kishon. They were destroyed at Endor, they became like dung upon the ground. Make their leaders like Oreb and Zeb and all their commanders like Zeba and Zalmunna, who said, let us take for ourselves the field of God as our possession. Oh my God, make them like whirling dust and like chaff before the wind. As fire burns down a forest, as flames set mountains ablaze, so drive them with your tempest and terrify them with your storm. Cover their faces with shame, O Lord, that they may seek your name. Let them be disgraced and terrified forever. Let them be put to confusion and perish. Let them know that you, whose name is I Am, you alone are the most high over all the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. It seems in recent years that disasters around us have gotten uh, more powerful. Uh, wildfires raging uh, in the western part of this nation and in other parts of the world seem like they rage out of control. Hurricanes that uh, come out of uh, the ocean and the Gulf that uh, wipe out communities both uh, down and uh, here in Florida, but also up the coasts. We have uh, wicked snowstorms that uh, blow through towns and uh, leave uh, huge amounts of damage, earthquakes and tornadoes and so much more. And with all of these disasters, there is uh, fear, there is uh, reconstruction that has to happen. Whole communities are transformed in ways that are hard to watch, but then new transformation can come uh, in ways that follow. The language of disaster is very prevalent at the end of this psalm, but it's not recounting disasters that has happened. It's language that is used to uh, invite God to wreak this sort of pain and transformation in a negative way on enemies. Uh, as a fire burns down a forest, as flames uh, set mountains ablaze, drive them with your tempest and terrify them with your storm. The psalmist is asking for a whole list of enemies that are named earlier in the psalm to be uh, terrified by God's power and for these disastrous kinds of uh, what we would think of as weather phenomena, but these acts of God to conquer these enemies and bring them to a place this is an intense prayer that no doubt grows out of intense emotions uh, that comes in contrast with these enemies that are there and a desire that they be torn down uh, in perhaps a, a space of revenge for what has been experienced because of them and now wanting God to bring that same kind of uh, pain to them. It's not an uplift, uplifting prayer, right? It is this cry out that God not be silent, that God go to these enemies and tear them down. And so uh, for us in our day where um, enemies uh, is, a, is a word that might be a, a tender one for some and one that uh, for someone like me, I don't feel like I have lots of enemies, like what can this prayer teach us? And uh, what I find in it is, is two real things. One is this desire uh, for the pain to stop, and for revenge to happen. But it doesn't settle simply in that place of destruction of enemies. You know, the end of the psalm says, let them be put to confusion and perish, yes. Uh, but before that it says, uh, cover their faces with shame, that they may seek your name. And at the end, let them know that you, whose name is I am, you alone are the most high over all the earth. So there is a sense at the end of this that 
This action of God is meant not just to destroy, but to bring some positive transformation as these other peoples find God as the God of life, this God that can uh, bring something new. And for us in those times where um, we have uh, tension and strife with others, especially when it's deeply emotional, uh, we too may uh, try to express some of this dire desire for revenge, but also then maybe couple that with a desire for transformation and trust that God is able to do that. And by speaking both of those things to God, we let go of it ourselves and uh, put it in God's hands to bring that transformation that uh, we uh, deeply desire to see. Let us pray. Give us the courage, O God, in our times of struggle to pray. To pray from our frustration and fear, to give words to our anger and pain, to cry out with curses and tears. Give us courage at the same time to pray. To pray from our hopes for transformation. To give words to our trust in you. To cry out with expectation of something wonderful and new. Amen. Thank you for joining me for 150 Days of Psalms. We will return tomorrow with Psalm number 84.